Episode 22 of BFT Bets. <laughs> With the- <laughs> Zach Lang's here. That's Absolutely. our favorite. Zed. I, I was going to see. I was curious how long you were going to let that run for. <laughs> Just the entire podcast <laughs> intro. Well, the thing is, I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know exactly how uh, how to start the show, and then I realized I start every show I do the exact same way by just saying the episode number or by saying "Welcome in." So I was like, "Yeah, I'll just roll with that one again. Why not?" Yo, let's go. We be betting, baby. Not well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not well, though. Ooh. Well, yeah, no, not great. Um, we're gonna get into all of that. Uh, Zach Lang joining us, like I said, because uh, Liam is not here today. Um, although Liam did have a smart play yesterday on uh, on Oilers Nation every day when he took one of the pre-built bets that our friends at Betway offers was for there to be a power play goal and an empty netter scored in the same game. <laughs> no, Liam. And I made fun of him. Ah. That's just a nonsense bet. I was like, there's no reason behind that. You're just doing it. It's like a spinning a slot machine at that point. Like you you can't like back that. And he was like, Nope, I got a feeling and it hit. So I mean, who am I to talk smack with that? Yeah. Sometimes way she goes sometimes. And then there was uh, myself. I called, so I found this prop on a same game parlay builder that is combining McDavid and dry to each get a power play point. And I hit it against Calgary paid out plus plus one fifteen against Buffalo. It was juiced up to one forty five plus one forty five. I was like, lock lock of the century like you awful. text me with such like the, there you were so convinced when you text me that it convinced me that i should do it and it seemed like it seemed rational too like connor mcdavid and leon dreisaitl both to get a point on the power play they're going up against buffalo yeah a team nobody expects anything from and it was plus 145 it's like I'm into what Tyler's selling right now. So I also went pretty heavy on it. <laughs> <It's> just, well, <laughs> way she goes sometimes. But I mean, that bet in theory, if they're going to pay it out at plus 145, that feels like something you could bet every single night and totally. probably be out ahead if the price is going to be that outrageous. Because those two, all they do is put up power play points. And especially this totally. year, it hit in the first two games. Yeah, I know. I'm with you. Like, I totally get it. I totally get it. It just, it didn't, it didn't work out for us yesterday, but you know, for love of the game sometimes. Yeah. Uh, last year, McDavid and dry both hit the 40 point mark in terms of power play points on the season. So I don't know. I'm going to be riding with that for, uh, for a little bit here. Started the NHL season, Zach Lang on your uh, Twitter account. You give out your plays of the day. Uh, how have you been doing so far this year? I've been doing decent, actually. I had a really nice start to the year. I went six and zero on my first six picks wow. uh, this year, so I was pretty stoked about that. I've uh, ran into some poor luck in the last couple of games. I'm now seven and five on the year. Um, still up two point oh nine units though, so pretty happy with that right now. So I'm decided this is the year that I'm going to really track my units really close. I picked a number that works for me that I'm comfortable betting for uh, every single game. So you know I do about two, maybe three a night. Uh, five days a week and just kind of go from there with it. But yeah, it's been a decent start. Like early in the year, I was crushing on shot props. Five of my first six wins were all shot props. I found early in the year, the markets were just not uh, not reacting to how good some of these players were last year. And I got some really good value. Like I had Gensel and Matthews for their overs at even money. Like that was pretty solid early in the year. And then, uh, yeah things have slowed down a little bit in the last couple of games, but I think I got to resort back to my shot props. Like I, I lost on the Bruins money line last night. I double dipped on that. Well, I've been bit by Jack Hughes twice for any time goals. So that sucked so far this year. So yeah, I've been finding uh, the shot props have been working pretty good for me so far this year. You are even just going off six and O to start the year is the complete opposite of how mine has gone. I've been doing okay. But then things that I think are just mortal locks, like absolute stunners. I've been losing on like the other day I had uh, like a favorites parlay, not even what I thought was that risky. But then the fucking leg that loses is the Leafs dropping a game to the Coyotes. It's like betting on favorites right now in October is not working for me. No, absolutely. It's It's been weird, man. Like I uh, I played one of those um, Betway 
parlay plays. It was plus 175 in that Coyotes game. Leafs money line over six and a half goals. Matthew anytime. Plus 175. I was like, oh, that's easy. Like, there's no way, like, this one's going to miss. Like, that's an easy couple of unit win right there. Nope, they lost. Like, it's like, what the hell is going on in the NHL this year? Tyler, you seen any trends on your end where you're just like, this doesn't make sense. What's going on? What's happening? Well, the one thing for me is uh, the Leafs and Yotes. I want to touch on that because the Leafs haven't beaten the Coyotes in regulation in Toronto since like 2002. It's wild. But this is something we saw a little bit last year as well, where there's these big upsets. Like as soon as you see an NHL team, because I mean, we've all been fans of the sport for a long time. We know how unpredictable hockey can be. Last year, I remember there was a couple of games with like the Yotes and the uh, Avalanche and like the Hawks and the Avalanche where not betting them on the money line. But I almost think if you get an NHL team at plus two and a half and it's anywhere close to like even money or minus 120, just bet it every time. And that was the case with Arizona. It's like, hey, <laughs> like their Toronto was like minus 500 on the money line or some shit. And you had Arizona plus two and a half goals, which means they can lose by two goals and your bet still cashes. I think it might just be Going forward for me, that's blanket betting. If a team is going to be plus two and a half, anywhere close to a respectable payout, I'm hammering it. Yeah, I don't mind that at all, actually. Like, you look at the way, like, I don't know, I find betting on the NHL to be so volatile in comparison to other pro sports. Like, to me, there's just so much more random shit that can happen in the NHL. Bad bounces, weird giveaways, empty net goals, power play goals, like, it just, it almost feels like such a difficult sport to bet on in comparison to something like the NFL per se, where, you know, you are able to get much better feels for it because teams only play one game a week. Whereas the NHL, you know, teams are playing three, four, sometimes five games a week. Right. Well, and sometimes there's just like last night in the Oilers game, the Oilers didn't play that bad. They were sloppy. You know, they made mistakes that ended up in the back of their net, but like sometimes you can't account for Eric Comrie standing on his head. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like, absolutely. And that's exactly what I mean, right? Like, it just, you get the weirdest things. Like, Eric Comrie should not have put up a 958 save percentage last night, for God's sake. But, hey, that's that's the beauty of the game in a sense, right? Well, yeah, and, like, the Oilers on their end, like, I had as an example, a prop I had last night was, it was my risky business bet. So, for me, when I do one of those, it's, like, a very specific thing, like a goal scorer. So, last night, I had a Vander Kane as a goal scorer on one of my props. And it's just like, how many chances does the guy get? And he just couldn't bury anything. So it was just, that was one of those ones where it was extra painful last night. Yeah. Um, the others were all over the place and couldn't get anything going. Um, for me, the other things I've been liking, and this goes back to last year, I think there can be value in assist props. Like I've never won to really wager too much on goal scorers. And my reasoning is while the payouts aren't as good, every goal that scored has two assists, right? Just from the odds and luck factor of it, you have a better chance of lucking into a guy getting an assist than you do lucking into a guy finding the back of the net and scoring. So like tonight, <laughs> I really like Nathan McKinnon. Five assists in his first three games, two of his three games so far this year have featured multi, or he's picked up multiple assists as well. And tonight he's minus 130 to pick up an apple against the Winnipeg Jets. The abs are at home. They're a very good home team. They should be able to score a few. Um, you know, it's better than picking him to just get a point, which is like minus 290. And while it's maybe not quite as good as him to score plus 115, plus 115 to score or minus 130 to pick up an assist, give me the assist all day because there's two of them on every single goal. The chances of him hitting it are just flat out better. Um, so I've always leaned towards assist props. I've missed on a couple already this year, though, so I'm not playing it great. But McKinnon tonight, I'm, I, I like that one to kind of snap out of it. And I like the shot props as well, Zach. I'm curious to know what your uh, sort of thought process is when you take a look at assist props. Uh, assist props or shot props? Sorry, shot props, shot props. Oh. Yep. So for me, like early on in the season, I was looking at last year's numbers and averages, right? So, you know, like early in the year, um, I was able to find some of these plays where – these guys were averaging like well over their shot total from last year. Like last year, like Riley Smith averaged like three and a half shots on goal per game. And early in the year, his line was two and a half at minus one ten. Like I was like, Oh, okay. Well that's tremendous value right there. As the season progresses, 
I kind of tend to look at like the last five or last 10 games, right? So it's like, okay, what well, is this guy riding a hot hand? What's his shot totals in the last few games? And then I always go and I look at um, naturalstatric.com and they have shot attempts against per 60. And I try and identify the teams that in general are leakier or who allow more shots on goal. So like anytime, like somebody's playing against Arizona or Columbus, um, those are teams that allow tons of shot attempts uh, or shots on goal again. Same thing with like the Seattle Kraken tonight. Like they've been just bleeding shots on net this year. So I, I kind of try and go with it in that sense of the term and and try and find the hot hand and, and the teams that uh, give up a lot of shots against. Yeah. I'm looking I like- at my bets from last night and I bet on Ryan Nugent Hopkins to get an assist last night, Tyler. <laughs> he scored and he had seven shots. <laughs> It's just like one of those ones where nothing was going right for me last night. Uh, for me, uh, I, it's kind of similar. Like if if you want an easy way to try find good shot props, I look at a slate, I see who the big favorites are. And just from that, if the books are saying, hey, there's a really good chance this team wins, probably a good chance that they get a lot of shots on goal as well. So that's kind of usually step one for me as I look and I'm like, all right, is there anyone that's like minus 200, minus 300, minus 400 in some cases? Who are their best players? And like you said, right now it's using last year's numbers. But once we get to like American Thanksgiving, it'll be like, all right, let's look at their last five to 10 games here. See if they've been hitting this thing with any sort of consistency. Um, but one guy I do like tonight is actually Kyle Connor. Over three and a half shots on goal. I got it paying plus 115. He's hit this once so far this season. He's missed it once so far this season. And while the Jets aren't close to favorites against the Avalanche, I think this could be a pretty high scoring game. You know, the the Avs haven't been the best team defensively to start the season. I also think the overs crushing in their game. So I like Kyle Connor. And if you go back to the end of last season as well, he shoots the pill a ton. He would have hit this in three of his last four to end last regular season. Like he does this with some sort of regularity and a plus one fifteen payout for something that's already happened in one of his two games this year. Um, that's a spot I really like. Are there any shot props tonight that you do like? Actually, no, I'm not on any shot props tonight. Um, I am on some point. Uh, I'm on a point prop tonight, though. Really? And it's actually in that game as well. I'm taking Blake Wheeler to get a single point of minus one twenty five. Um, Blake Wheeler's had more success against the Avalanche throughout his entire career than any other team. He's got 52 points in 38 games against the Avalanche. Next closest is like the St. Louis Blues, where he has 41 points in 38 games. You know, I think Wheeler's a guy who, you know, he had a bit of a tough offseason, right? Got stripped of his captaincy, and he's kind of playing with a bit of a chip on his shoulder right now. You know, he's got one point in two games this year. And I think at minus 125, that's uh, that's a number that I really like tonight. So Sticking with that game, I'm over at our friends at Betway, Tyler. Yeah. And in their pre-built bets for the Colorado Avalanche and Winnipeg Jets, or Jets at Avalanche, I should say. Mm-hmm. Colorado over 36 shots on goal is minus 105. It's basically even money. Like, I, I, I would, I'm interested in that one because I feel like Colorado is going to fire a ton on Hellebuck tonight. Yeah, they could like the abs at home is always such a good matchup, right? Because they're just last year. They were so, so good on home ice. I'm just looking at uh, the numbers here so far. Again, Zach, good call on natural statric. That's a great site. Um, so far this year, the abs are averaging just under 33 shots per 60. And you said that lines at 36, 36. Yep. Jets are giving up the sixth most shots against per 60 in the NHL. So I think that might be a good spot with the abs kind of averaging sorry, the Jets on average giving up a ton of shots compared to the rest of the league. Avs being at home should be a decent bump there as well. So that's actually a good little spot to to take a look at tonight. Yeah, according to NHL.com, yeah, Winnipeg Jets are right now averaging 35 shots against per night. So, you know, maybe my stars are aligning here. Oh, I hope we get something right. I would love that because last week was, uh, again, not a banner one. For- <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Yeah, so far this year, I went on, so I started well. I went 3 and 0 on the first night and betting on hockey it's just such a grind to get through an entire regular season. Like last year every single day on the Daily Faceoff show I gave two to four bets for the day. By the end of the season I had just over 350 bets placed throughout the entire year. There were points early in the season where I was up close to 20 units. By about February I was down about 15 units. So uh, like a 35 unit swing over the span of like two and a half months. I dropped that hard 
And then from February to the end of the year, I got on a couple of things that worked really well. The Buffalo Sabres top line with uh, Skinner, Thompson, and Tuck. I was hammering their props in the last like 15 games of the season. I had a couple teams that I had hit in the over consistently. I ended up up 12 units. I had another 20 some unit swing in the last two and a half months of the year. So Zach, I'm sure you can attest to this, but like you really have to manage your bankroll well with a sport like hockey because there's just so much variance. I went three and oh on night one. And then I went one and nine over the next four days. Yeah, oh, it's, it's stressful. It, it can be, it can absolutely be stressful. Like doing this over the course of an entire season, it takes a toll. But, you know, I think for me coming into this year and, and I play a lot of DraftKings as well. And this is a mindset that I've been having over there as well as like, just find a process and roll with it and just trust the process, right? You know, find things that work for you, find a system, find things you like to identify. Like, for me, it's the shot prop so far this year that I've really been liking for the most part and just kind of keep riding that and, you know, try and try and not get too high and not get too low and know that over time, you know, hopefully you'll be able to break even, right? How about another one for you boys? Going back to Colorado and Winnipeg tonight. Again, our friends at Betway, they've got some player specials that I'm enjoying here. And uh, what do you think about Nathan McKinnon and Mark Shifley both to register one plus point at plus 110. Oh, that's actually really nice. Yeah, I, wanna, I just want to see how Shifley's been doing so far this season. Uh, but on the surface, like again, the over I think is definitely in play here just because the Avs have been a pretty solid over team so far this year. Shifley's got three goals in two games and now you're betting on him to just get a point along with Nathan McKinnon. I mean, the, the way I would look at this, the over is six and a half. It's paying minus 110. If you like this game to go over at minus 110, then if there's seven goals tonight, Shifley and McKinnon are probably involved in one of them. So to get them each to register a point at plus 15, that actually might be a way to get better value out of betting on this to just be a high scoring game. I, I think it's a reasonable bet. Again, we're talking about at Betway, they've got the player specials. So just sometimes you weed around in there and you dive into what they've got going on and you can find some little nuggets like this. I quite like this one. Well, you think about it even still, right? Like say, for example, this game goes under, like say if it, say if it's just a six goal game instead of a seven goal game with a six and a half line, you know, six goals is still a lot for a hockey game. Shifley and McKinnon, they're still, like you said, Tyler, top line players. Yeah. It might be an, an, a little bit of an easier way to, to kind of get off the goal variance because I find goal totals being, or totals for games being one of the more difficult things to really predict unless you kind of have like two really high end goaltenders uh, to be able to do that. Right. Yeah. Also early in the year, like over unders sometimes feel like such a crap shoot. Um, like there's just, again, games like last night, Edmonton, Buffalo, where you're like, Hey, going up against Eric Comrie career journeyman Oilers offense has been scoring pretty well. You're like this game, pretty good chance. It goes like over five and a half over six. When you consider the way the two teams have been playing bang out of nowhere, three, one game, which I think also just goes back to what you said, Zach. Like if you're someone who wants to get into the betting, like from a more serious angle, like bankroll management is huge. And one lesson I learned last night is for the love of Christ, don't touch live bets. Like they're if, if you bet the team outright, you're going to be spitting it out till the end. Anyways, there's no reason to go like doubling down because they go down two one early, unless you're betting live against the Vancouver Canucks. When they go up by a few goals, it's just not worth it. Yeah. I got hooked with that last night. I was. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, I want to ask you guys though, because Zach mentioned something about tracking units this year. How are you guys doing that? Because I think that there's a lot of people that probably would like to know how they do over the long run. And if you're just looking at your bet slips, it can be difficult to kind of put it all together. For me, I use a website called actionnetwork.net or sorry.com. Uh, they have a really good system in place there where you can um, put in your bet slips and it shows you all your statistics. So you're able to easily see, you know, what did you do yesterday, the last seven, last 30 and all time. Um, you can also have it show your prop bet stats, uh, your future stats, and it splits it up over sports as well. So that's kind of the cool thing. Uh, for me, it's kind of the easy way to be able to sort of keep an eye on how I'm doing over time and, and go from there. Shows you your ROI, your win percentage, your record. It's pretty solid as far as I'm concerned. One more time, Zach. What was the website? Uh, actionnetwork.com. What do you do? What do you do over there, Tyler? Old school. I just have a spreadsheet. You really? Yeah. I just got a big spreadsheet. And anytime I place a bet, I put my wager in the spreadsheet. If it's one of my DFO recommended bets, it goes on the DFO column. If it's one of my Oilers Nation everyday 
uh, bets that I do. I give an Oilers bet of the day. Um, I put it in the other column and I track how much I put on it, just one unit or half a unit. And then I track how much I win if the bet hits. Hmm. A couple of different little systems for you. So Zach's kind of got something that's automated. Tyler's out here grinding in the spreadsheets. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a spreadsheet guy. I don't know how the hell to set that shit up. I need a website no. to do it for me. Yeah, I like I'm I when next time I see you, Tyler, I want to have a look at that spreadsheet to see what you've got going on in there. Yeah, hell yeah. And then I also put in like my futures bets at the start of the year. And that's like the first page of the spreadsheet so that I can always have a reminder of like, oh yeah, what am I tracking for the year? But I made one of the bigger betting faux pas uh the other day. Oh, this uh, is a good one. Yeah. So <laughs> Oiler, tell Zach. Tell Zach. I want to hear this. Oiler season is about to start, and I'm like, all right, I want to put some money down on the oil. I think they're being a little undervalued by some books here. So I go, I bet Connor McDavid over 121 and a half points on the season. I think this guy's going to crush it this season. I love it. I'm happy. I also look, I go Oilers over 102 and a half points this year as a team. They hit 104 last year and they were like the worst team in the NHL for two months. They'll break 104 this season. No problem. Put the bets in, come back after the Oilers beat the Canucks. And I was like, just curious, like if I get, if I'm getting that offered any good uh, bet payouts for this. And uh, I bet the under on the Oilers. Not on McDavid, but on the Oilers. I hit under instead of over. So now I am sweating out Oilers under 102 and a half on the season. Oh, Tyler. Tyler, what have you, you done? Be careful. You always have to double check your bet slips. I've had a couple buddies do that with some uh, larger wagers that have come back and bit them in the behind. Good time to hedge your bet, though, Tyler. Or you do the uh, the Jay Downton special, right, Tyler, where that's accidentally betting on the same thing multiple times because you, you forgot what you bet on earlier in the day. Yeah, Jay is the king of doing that. Um, but yeah, like if I can get the Oilers point total back up at some point, like I will. I will hedge it the other way, but I don't think I'm getting that at any point. So now I'm just waiting for the cash out and I'll probably cash it out. Or this is what some people would refer to as an emotional hedge, you know? If the Oilers mm-hmm. have a miserable season and finish with like a hundred points, even, and they don't get that, eh, I'll have a couple extra hundred bucks in my pocket. If That's the accidental Oil- whoopsie, if the Oilers go over 102 and a half points, I've probably bet them on the money line a bunch of times this year. And I've probably made that money back. So like, who cares? Um, so I don't know. That's just what I'm doing to forgive myself. That's the route I've talked myself through. Um, Cause I am very mad. I respect it. Mm-hmm. We all have to convince ourselves of stuff, things at times, you know? Yeah. Um, another thing I did, I'd love your guys thoughts on this and Zach, you're the bigger NFL guy. So I, I did a little bet with my heart and I'll tell you how much I put on it. Cause the cash outs are kind of relevant. I just wanted to, I had a good feeling about my guy, Josh Allen this year. And I had some money left in an account one day on an NFL Sunday. I had a few beers too. Um, it was right before I went down to Buffalo for their home opener. I'm like, this guy's winning MVP this season. So I put $78 on Josh Allen to win MVP at plus 500. He is on fire to start the year. He's racking up the passing yards, all that. 78, they're offering me a cash out already of 156. So I could double my money or do I sweat it out and wait and see if I can get the whole $470 in return? That's not bad. What is, what's it live right now? Do you know? Plus like I'd be curious. Pardon me? Plus 200. Plus 200, Yeah. Ah, uh, man, I don't know. I'd like that ride, honestly. Like, he's having such a good year. Like, an amazing year. I, I just, I don't know if there's anybody who's close to being an MVP caliber player as he is right now. I really don't. I think that's a pretty good bet, man. Like, plus, getting him at plus 500 for that, I think that's pretty solid. Considering it's already dropped down to plus 200, like, no wonder they're offering you the cash out on it, right? Yeah, actually, I, I, he's moved up recently. He's now all the way up to plus 150. Jalen Hurts is right behind him, plus 450. I shouldn't even say right behind him. That's a pretty big gap. So I'm now just waiting because I've been every week I go and I see what the cash out option they've given me is. And it skyrocketed after they beat the Chiefs. I think it was like 90 bucks before this week against the Chiefs. They win up to 156. I'm just trying to come up in my head with like a magic number because I would be just devastated if I let it ride and then like week. 11 or 12 he got hurt or like something terrible happens and i'd be pretty pissed but uh i think i think hurts is the only real concern there the only threat like he's having an unbelievable year there right like i don't know maybe like maybe if you get up to that like 200 250 mark then maybe it's like okay like i would probably consider a cash out around there man 
It's always tantalizing when you get those cash out offers. Uh, let's so, talk- sometimes a bird in the hand though, Tyler bird in the hand. And that's kind of my thinking, right? Um, but anyways, let's wrap this up. Cause we only got a couple more minutes available on today's show with a little bit of thoughts about the upcoming NFL slate. Zach Lang, you're a big NFL guy. What do you like this week? Oh man, I haven't had a good chance to really dip into it. I, I haven't been betting a whole lot on the NFL this year, actually. I've kind of been riding uh, the DraftKings over there. Oh. Um, I don't know. I, let me take a quick look and uh, see if there's anything that jumps out to me quickly. Uh, uh, Thursday. Sorry, last, go ahead. Last week, my teaser got screwed over because of the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers being unable to beat the Carolina Panthers. Wildly frustrating. Tom Brady quickly turning into a villain once again in uh, my <laughs> eyes, super annoying. He, he screwed me on a bunch of bets, mm-hmm. um, but I did give out a plus 200 NFL parlay that cashed on Oilers nation every day. So I'll probably do another one of those uh, this Friday on the show, but I am going to give another teaser for this week. There's a few teams that I think are really good teaser spots. The Ravens minus six and a half against the Browns. Uh, the Falcons, they are against the spread gods this year. I don't think they've lost against the spread once this season. They're plus six against the Bengals. I don't hate the idea of getting that up to uh, plus 12 on a six point teaser. The Giants taking on the Jags, the Giants plus three road underdogs. You can get the Giants up to plus nine. That is one of the spots I really, really like. And also I'm combining it. Oh, if they screw me again, I'll be pissed, but I am taking the Buccaneers at minus 10 and a half, teasing it down. So I got the Bucks on a teaser at, at minus four, the Giants up to plus nine and a half against the Jags. That's the way I'm rolling for uh, my teaser bet of the week. Um, Zach, anything you like? Just first glance. Yeah. First glance. Uh, give me the Broncos team total under 19 and a half. The New York Jets have been red hot this year. Their defense yeah. has looked so good. Sauce Gardner has turned into a monster this year as a rookie. I think he's going to be able to shut down Cortland Sutton, who's really been the top target uh, for Russ Wilson and those Broncos. You know, they've really struggled this year. Um, I've been really surprised by how bad they've actually been. Uh, on top of that, one other bet that I like this week is the Packers on the spread, minus five and a half, 106. The commanders are a terrible team. They're just not a good football team at all. They're going to be going with their backup and Taylor Heineke, who like he showed well last year, but again, this is going to be his first game of the year. Um, I, I think it's time for Aaron Rodgers and those Packers to, to really make a mark here. Okay, and quickly we'll build our uh, sandwich for tonight's NHL action bag milk. One bet you like tonight. I'm going to go, I'm going to add in uh, b- b- where did I, I just lost it. It was the avalanche over 36 shots. Avs over 36 shots. That Zach is plus, Lang. plus 115. Yes, sir. Zach Lang, what do you like? You hit him with that Blake Wheeler point minus uh, 125. Blake Wheeler point minus 125. And I'm going to take the over six and a half goals between the Flyers and the Panthers. All right, Zach. This is the week. This is the week. We're going to hit it, Tyler. The week. You got to believe. Zach Lang special adding in the Blake Wheeler point. I like it. I like it. All right. Uh, Thanks for tuning in. We're going to try to keep doing these once a week throughout the NHL season. Talk a bunch of betting. Zach, thanks for hopping on today. My pleasure, boys. Later, boys.